What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do a review of the GAP RC Cinepro 4K with the F7 board on board. What's cool about this little quad is that, well, it actually worked out of the box with no problems. Again, GAP RC giving like two thumbs up um, for everything they do. I've been telling people on the road recently about getting one of these boxes in the mail with that GAP RC logo on there. There's a lot of different companies out of China right now producing stuff that um, they have their label on and sometimes you get it and everything works out great and sometimes it doesn't. And GEPRC just is continuing to grow their reputation to where, um, and it almost sounds like I could be a sales rep for them, but I've, I've flown GEPRC for, God, it seems like a little over three years now. They were also one of the first producers of one of the X frames that I saw coming out of China one of the original X frames that was a kit build. Um, and I built that way back. If you go to the very beginnings of my channel, you'll see that video. Uh, one of the first build videos on this channel was from the GEP RC um, company. So I have a long history with them of using their products and demoing them um, using some prototypes. And we're at the point now where in 2019, we have another paradigm shift of 4K coming to sub 250 gram type of quads. A lot of people want that. They want 4K, but the the conundrum right now is people want a GoPro with hyper smooth on a quad. They want that, but you have to ask yourself the question, do I want that extra weight of the GoPro or do I not want hyper smooth? The Cadex Tarsier that's on here, it has two cameras on board. It has a little FPV camera running uh, around six milliseconds, I believe. It, it might be higher than that, but um, it's not necessarily a race camera. It's more of a uh, freestyle or cinema style camera. So um, the bottom camera, I believe it's the, the top camera. That's the 4K camera. Actually, we did a little bit of testing with uh, putting something over the lens to see which one was recording the 4K. So I believe it is the top one. So the nice thing about that is that you do have two different cameras running on two different systems, uh, one recording your 4K going back to the DVR where your micro SD card is put into the Tarsier um, breakout board just behind the camera. So it's two separate boards um, from your camera sensors, which is kind of cool. Um, this is my first experience this week with the Tarsier. And now uh, I went from not having one of them to having four of them to test. And I have four of these little cinema whoops in my shop right now. Um, two of them are two inch and two of them are three inch. So all those reviews will come up on the channel. But um, so far out of my testing, this one has proven to be um, the best QC, the best quality. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning of this video is that GEPRC always brings stuff to the table that just works out of the box. I just, I bind it up and it works. So um, I don't know what your experience with them is, but I bet it's, it's pretty decent compared to some of the other companies out there. So uh, without further ado, let me take you out to the uh, middle of nowhere in the van and we'll, we'll do a little testing with this one and I'll show you what the footage looks like. It is unstabilized footage, no electronic stabilization in this camera yet, um, as of the version 1.0. Maybe down the road they'll incorporate that, but it's gonna make it a little more expensive for you guys. But um, inevitably, that's what we would like to see on this, is some electronic stabilization. And uh, then it would really, really start to be a GoPro competitor for the micro brushless kingdom. So uh, without, yeah, again, without further ado, let's go ahead outside and uh, let's do some, some testing with this guy. Let me show you what the video looks like. And then we'll come back to the bench and we'll, we'll break this thing down on the bench and I'll give you my opinion about the, uh, the QC, the performance, the build quality, and my overall rating for the GEP RC Cinepro 4K F7 Edition Micro Woo. Here we go.
right guys welcome back from my trip i was gone for two days out in the middle of nowhere with this quad i like to get out of the city and and go out and test these things for you where i can have no distractions or a lot of traffic and people asking me questions so um, i also like to to take these quads out and show you guys um, some nice footage rather than just kind of you know shooting in a, in a park or my backyard so i uh, try to make it a little more interesting for you but also kind of bring you guys some real world testing of the products that I get. And like I said before in the beginning of this video, GEPRC has been solid for me. Um, I had four, four 4K Cine Whoops to test out this weekend and two of them didn't work. The one that worked the best out of all four of them so far was this one. And um, right now I won't name any names, but I will have a full best of the best 4K Cine Whoop video coming up on the channel so you can look for that. But so far this one is uh, again my favorite out of the bunch and I'm going to talk about those reasons in this video um, primarily durability first is is always really important uh, enough camera protection around the 4k Tarsier camera it does have a sort of real-time run FPV um, analog camera on I believe it was the very bottom one and then your 4k cameras on the top here you do have a ribbon cable that's recessed in here running to the Tarsier board right here and I use a class U3 micro SD card you can see it right in there and this prop guard is in the way of getting that in and out but if you take both of your thumbs and you push it down slightly you can get to it to pop it in and out now this might be a, a con in some people's eyes but in a way to me it's a pro too because there is no latch on the outside of this SD card cover and if it does pop out in a crash this is going to prevent it from coming all the way out of the slot so that prop guard is actually helping you in a way save your 32 gigabyte U3 card. These are about $25 to $29 uh, right now at Best Buy. Go ahead and pick yourself up one of these because you won't get any freeze frames. Uh, if you use like a class 10 micro SD, you might freeze up the camera and crash the Tarsier. So um, very important that you do that. And mine was a plug and play version. So I actually took an XM Plus. I wanted to put Crossfire on there and test that for you guys, but uh, I did not have time. So there's my XM Plus there. I've got the X-T30 in the back. Dipole antenna running a VTX in the back. Uh, I believe it's a GEP RC VTX as well, running about 200 milliwatt. It is smart audio on board and it is switchable for your bands and channels. I believe there's six different bands and 48 channels. This is your frequency table card right here. So you can go in your goggles and if you're if you were racing this, you're probably not. You could get with your friends and let them know what channel you're on there. You get a CADX controller and there is a little plug right here in the middle. You can see it right here and this plugs into it and that changes your OSD on your analog at PV view camera. Pretty easy to use that and it comes with an extra three wire cable right here. You could also snip these ends off and use these for an extra receiver wire if you needed to which is cool. You get some stickers in the box. You get two different types of stickers, red and black. I didn't put those on anything yet, but it's always cool to get stickers. Let's just go ahead and give it a weigh in real quick and let's see what we get. With no battery, I'm getting 133.7 grams. And if you get above the 250 gram mark with the 850, you could always back off down to a 550 to get yourself under that weight. And the frame is very similar to something I flew previously on the channel. This is actually the Signet frame and I love this frame because it was ultra durable. It was uh, really cool at the time when it came out. It looks super robust. It has aluminum front end on it. Fairly good camera protection for the Tarsier up front. Only a little bit of the camera sticking up. And in my crashes out in the desert, there are a lot of rocks and boulders around and pretty much anytime you crash, you're going to hit a boulder at some point. Um, so front and back aluminum plates, you have a three millimeter top plate here. You have a unibody on the bottom with two different mounting points for your 20 by 20 stacks. Your Tarsier is riding up front with your DVR on board and the sensor for the 4K sensor. Um, you can also break Tarsier down to, I believe it was 2.7K at 60 frames per second, which is probably what I would shoot at on the regular. Instead of shooting 4K, I'm just gonna fill up this 32 gigabyte card kind of fast. Um, back here we have the dual gyro F7 flight controller back here. And then underneath here we have a 30 amp, this is a 32 bit BL Heli ESC setup here. So you'll need BL Heli 32 configurator to configure these. Now out on the ends of the arms, we have 
a different style motor and I noticed that they dropped the KV on this one a little bit here. This is 1105 5000 KV motors, open bottom design right here. Uh, a little longer bolts to accommodate your prop guards here. And when I first got this, I thought that, oh God, here we go with prop guards. This thing's going to have a ton of washout. It's going to be kind of lumbering around in the air. It's not going to fly super great. And that was my first fear with this. But the prop guards are ultra durable. You're probably not going to break these. Um, when they do hit the hard ground, they just kind of bounce. And out of all the boulders that it hit out there, it came back kind of dusty, but it didn't have any parts of it broken. You also have a TPU mount in the back here for your antenna posts. Your dipole comes through there and your XT60 slides through there. Eight bolts on the very top plate. It's a little much for the bolts, but uh, just makes your frame a little bit more rigid. And those are also recessed bolts as well. We have Betaflight 3.5 on here. It is not Betaflight 4.0, which is kind of good because we were having some issues with 4.0 and above, having some actual flyaway talk about uh, in the forums people were talking about. So um, look out for Betaflight 4.0 right now. I don't really suggest running it. In the back, you can barely see this also, but there is a built-in buzzer right here on the left-hand side of the quad frame, built right into the TPU, which is cool. So that's not gonna get damaged. And we have our video capacitor over here cleaning up any noise in your video. So you should really should get a really nice video. And speaking of video, this is the app that you can run and it says CADEX FBB. If you go in the app store, it runs on iOS and Android. You're gonna have to connect to this app via Wi-Fi. And here's the way you do it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in the battery to your quad. There are two buttons here. And the back one is your Wi-Fi button and the record button. This front button up here is your modes button to switch between like video mode and photo mode. When you're recording video, you will see a red LED down here on the very bottom of this top board flashing. Uh, before you take off, make sure you see that flashing LED. You can also start the recording inside the app once you connect. To be able to connect to this CADEX app inside your phone, you're going to have to press and hold the Wi-Fi button for about three to four seconds. Once you're in your Wi-Fi menu right here, you will see that it starts to show up. Um, so you will see the wheel start to spin here and then it's going to show up CADEX. And the password is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, to be able to log into this. I was out in the field and I had no signal on my phone so I was having trouble trying to get this set up, but it is kind of a default password in the Wi-Fi world for drones. So either it's either, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I tried both and the eight worked. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is good to go with the CADEX app. Once you get in there, you can change all of your camera resolution. You can change looping. There is a lot of different features inside this app. I can make a whole video on this app. Um, they really did do their homework on the app and I, I think the app is is actually worth the purchase for the Cadex Tarsier. So honestly, so far, this one probably gets the least amount of jello out of the other ones that I flew. The other one that I flew was the Beta 85X HD 4K version that I have coming, um, that review's coming up on the channel. I'm still testing that one, but if you're gonna ask me which one you should buy, should I buy the Beta 85 4K or should I get this one? Well, it just depends on your flying situation. If you're gonna fly somewhere where you have a nice small park to fly in and your area is smaller uh, with a little more wind shadow and less wind, then go for the 85 millimeter version from Beta FPV coming up. If you want to fly longer range or sort of bigger open environments with maybe a little more wind and the heavier ones do get less jello. They, they honestly do a little bit extra weight and I've talked about this one before with the 85X. When I ran a heavier battery it had less jello in windy conditions and I flew this one in over a 15 mile an hour wind maybe 15 to 20 at times and still I came back with jello free video which is still just kind of amazing 4k at 30 frames per second and the video looked absolutely great on this quad so uh, I'm gonna give this one a, uh, a 5 out of 5 and I don't do that a lot on the channel but I'm really happy with the way that this one came out um, the way that the video looks the way that the DVR looks the protection the robust frame I'm glad they actually just recycled this signet frame and and put the Tarsi arrow on it for you 
and called it a Cinepro, who cares? Uh, because this frame is a really successful frame and they've added prop guards on here without all the weird flying characteristics. Even though I did some mild freestyle, it never had that washout effect where it tumbled backwards. Um, so I think it flies great, it's durable, and it's reliable is the biggest thing that you once you buy it you know it's going to work out of the box so definitely a good job again to the gap rc family i really like your stuff so keep it coming and i uh, can't wait to fly what you guys have coming up next but thanks again for watching my reviews guys i'm justin davis take care guys and happy flying i'll see you on the next one